I'm Inozuka. I'm a cold-blooded Yakuza. Well, at least I used to be. Stop following me. I can go shopping on my own. I have to. What if something happens to you? My boss would kill me. Literally. Just stop following me, okay? I saw you punching someone the other day. What? No, you got it all wrong. He was causing trouble, so I... Why didn't you just call the cops? I guess, but... Hey, wait up! My job was to become friends with the boss's daughter because she didn't have any friends at school. It was hard for her to make friends. Everyone avoided her because her dad was a Yakuza boss. And because of this, she hated violence. And for me, being a friend wasn't the only assignment. I was in charge of managing one of our front companies. These days, you gotta use your brain to make money. Violence only gets you so far. Things weren't like that when I was young, but I guess times change. Sir, sales have been going down and- Ouch! Why'd you do that? Stop calling me sir. It's annoying. What? Uh, okay. Oh, hey. How's it going with the boss's daughter? Fine. Doesn't sound like it. I guess none of us are perfect. Keep your head up, Inuzuka. What did you call me? Huh? You told me not to call you sir, so... Shut up. I'm sorry! As punishment, I ruined his favorite jeans. I wanted to do more, but if the boss's daughter found out about this... One day, I was walking in the park with her. Inuzuka, I hear something. I hear that too. I wonder where it's coming from. I'm worried. Hey, hold on. It sounded like someone was fighting. What now? It was coming from a nearby parking lot. Some scary looking guy was yelling at a guy wearing a suit. The scary guy looked pissed. Like I said, this is my parking spot! What? It was open when I got here! Stop your bitching! But I... I gotta park my car too. I pay for this parking spot, so... Could you please move your car? Go park somewhere else! You're telling me what to do now? You serious? Huh? You know who I am, huh? Uh, no? Take a look at this! Huh? Is that... The scary guy pulled something out of his pocket. I couldn't see what it was. I wondered what it was. No! Ah! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! What is that in his hands, Inazuka? No idea. Maybe it's a Yakuza badge or something. Not sure. Not sure? Ugh, you're so useless. Sorry. Go help him! Okay, I will. Hey! What's going on here? Who the hell are you? I overheard what you said. You're not making any sense. You don't even know who I am, do you? Get out of here before you get hurt, kid! You better listen to him! Huh? Come here! Come! Uh, let me go! Whatever. I gotta go anyways. I don't have time for this. Hey, asshole! Let him know who I am, yeah? Yes, sir! STOP PULLING ON MY SHIRT! I know you were just trying to help, but that man, he was Yakuza! Yakuza? Yes. No way, he's just a delinquent! No, he's not. I saw it! Saw what? The badge! He had the golden badge! Golden badge? Yes, it has his family symbol and everything! Which family? Sorry, I don't know much about Yakuza, so... Just stay away from him, okay? Don't say that I didn't warn you. Gotta go! Goodbye! It didn't make sense. He was definitely not from my family. And most of the families around this area joined us years ago. Maybe some other family is trying to take over? I don't think that's the case either. With the new law, it's harder than ever to start a war, so... Oh well. I'm sure it's nothing. Inazuka, did you help him? Uh, well... Not really. Oh, I thought you might be able to help. Too bad. Well, uh, I tried, but... Yeah. Ugh. That jerk made me look bad in front of her! Ugh. A few days later... Mr. Inuzuka, I've been hearing this rumor. About? Some of our members are threatening restaurant owners to eat for free. 
What? Who? Bring him to me right now! I knew you'd say that, so I did some digging. But nobody knew anything about that. And it looked like everyone was telling the truth. Oh. Good work, I guess. <laughs> Thanks. Never hurts to have someone smart like me around. Shut up. Sorry. So it wasn't one of ours, then. I'm sure of it. Our members know better than that. They're pretty scared of you, too. What did I do? You don't remember? Just the other day, you shaved someone's head for littering. Then you made him wear a t-shirt that says, I litter, and made him clean the streets all day long. I can't seem to remember. Well, it happened. Everyone was terrified. Everyone stopped littering after that, though. The other day, I heard a little kid saying, If you litter, Inuzuka will come and get you. What? It's true. Anyways, my point is, none of our members would do that. I see. What are you guys talking about? Chief, there's a rumor going around. Something about one of our members threatening restaurant owners to eat for free. That's not good. I'll look into it. Oh, about the other thing. How's that coming? Ah, uh, about that. Nothing yet. I see. What about you, Heiji? Oh, uh, I'm busy, sir. I... No, you're not. You'll be perfect for it. You do it, Heiji. Look, does it have to be someone from the family? Why don't we just hire someone online or something? Maybe. The chief was looking for someone to do a job, but nobody wanted to do it. He was always looking to recruit new guys. Anyways, I ordered Heiji to find the truth about this rumor going around. A week later... Mr. Inuzuka, we found him! The guy threatening restaurant owners? Yes. This is him. Wait, that's... I recognized his face. I tried to grab him, but he got away. I'm sorry. We gotta get him now. Before he tries anything again. Let's go! Yes, sir! Then I got a call from my front company. What could they want? Inuzuka speaking. Mr. President! Don't call me that! Sorry, Mr. Inuzuka. Um, there was this illegally parked car in our parking lot, so I told him to move. But then he showed me this golden badge, and now he's demanding to see the person in charge. He wants to sue us for damages or something and... He's still there? Yes, he is. Can you come? Be there in ten. Thank you. This might be our guy. I headed over to the company. It was the same guy I saw a few weeks ago. The same guy in the picture. Good. Now I don't have to spend time looking for him. You're the one in charge? Yes. One of your employees told me to move my car. Okay. Well, this is private property, so... What's the problem here? Ah, uh, you just don't get it, do you? Listen, this place belongs to us. Our family. Understand what I'm saying? Huh? Fine, I'll show you. Then he pulled out the golden badge. It was the Uwasagumi badge. Someone must have dropped it. Idiot. And this is the executive badge. I'm with Uwasagumi! This whole area belongs to us! So that means I can park wherever I want! Oh, I had no idea. Why didn't you tell me? I'll call the chief right away. Huh? You know this is a front company for the Uwasagumi, right? Of course you do. You just said you work for Uwasagumi, so... Actually... We only started the front company a few months ago. Maybe the lower rank members don't know about it yet. By the way, I run this place. I'm Yakuza too, you know. Stop talking out of your ass! Alright then. We'll find out soon enough. I called the chief. I could have handled this on my own, but I had my reasons. The chief told me he was on his way. He arrived at the scene five minutes later. So you're the one that's been causing trouble in the neighborhood, huh? I'm Ryu, chief of the Uwasagumi. Huh? No way! Uh, where's your badge then, huh? Liar! Liar! <laughs> See this? If you're a member, you should have a badge like this! Wait, that's my badge! Wait, really? Yeah. Oh, 
so he was the idiot who dropped it. When I went to the bathhouse the other day, someone stole my clothes. It was you, wasn't it? You caused a lot of trouble for us, you know. He was right. Eiji had to take the fall for him. He ended up borrowing ladies clothes from the bathhouse owner and had to wear it all the way home. Then... Uh, hold on. That story can wait. So how are you gonna make this right, huh? Wait! I had no idea it was real! I thought... I... Of course it's real! That's it! You're coming with us! Time to sleep with the fishes! What?! No! Please! Please don't kill me! I'm sorry! Chief, I think there's a better way. Yeah? Yes, that's why I called you here. Look, this is his car. It's a nice car. Yeah, so I thought maybe he can drive for you. A driver, huh? Sounds like a good idea. Huh? What do you mean? Okay, it's decided. I'm making you my driver. You got that? If I do this, you won't kill me? Yeah, but if you try to run away, you know. And all your pay will go to the people you stole from. Understand? Yes, yes! As long as you don't kill me! The chief was looking for a driver. It was the worst job ever. Why? Hey! Yes, sir! Take me to headquarters. Yes, sir! Hey, dumbass! Yes? Go slower! You're shaking the car! What? I'm going the speed limit! I... You talking back to me now? Huh? You wanna die? I'm sorry! I'm sorry! Uh, I feel sick. Huh? <laughs> this is your fault for driving like a maniac. I'm gonna get you back for this. <laughs> what? Ah, it smells! Chief always got car sick when he rode in cars. But he really liked cars. He's ruined so many of our cars already. And he blamed everything on the driver. It was the worst job ever. The guy we caught, his name was Masa. He ran away after a week. I guess he couldn't take it anymore. Gotcha! Mr. Inuzuka? No, please, please let me go! After what you did? No way! Come on now, give it up! He tried to make a run for it many times, but we caught him every time. As long as he's around, we don't have to be the driver. We needed him. A few weeks later... Inazuka, I heard you help people. <laughs> Dad told me. Here, give me your hand. Oh? Oh, uh, thanks. Yes, she approved. Who is this? Masa. He's the driver. The driver for the chief? Yes. What happened to his head? Oh, he's trying out a new style. Masa lost his hair from all the stress. He was always getting vomit on the back of his head anyway, so... Whatever. But he did get really good at driving. He drove me the other day, and it was really comfortable. But I hear the chief still throws up every time. I want a haircut too! Sounds good. Let's get you to a beauty salon. I'm sure your dad will love it. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. The chief isn't here today, so let's get Masa to drive us. Okay. It was a step forward, but I still had a long way to go to become her friend. This was the toughest job ever. Oh well. I just gotta keep at it. I got this. Just look at Masa. He lost all his hair from stress, but he's still working hard every day. I can't give up now. I know. I'll take her to the aquarium after the beauty salon. Then we'll stop by a cafe and have some chocolate ice cream. It's the perfect plan. Inuzuka, why are you smiling? You creep me out. Get away from me. What? No, I... <laughs> what the hell are you laughing at, asshole? Ah! <laughs> I'm sorry! Uh, I guess I just gotta keep at it. I'm Jimmy. I'm in 8th grade. Actually, Jimmy isn't my real name. I was always the quiet type in school. So they started calling me Jimmy. They named me after this lame character in a hit TV show. 
My real name was Masashi Onishi. This is my mom. She loved me very much. Hey, I'm home! Hey, Mom! Dinner's ready! I filled up the bathtub, too, if you want to hop in the shower first. Oh, Masashi, you're a true lifesaver. You're just so sweet, just like your father. He'd be so proud of you. Huh? Uh, thanks. What's the matter, Mom? Oh, nothing. I'm fine. Dad died when I was little. Mom raised me single-handedly. I did everything I could to help Mom out. I studied really hard. I wanted to go to a good college and get a good job to help my mom. Jimmy, it's recess! You still studying? <laughs> oh, I know. Can you do my homework for me? Huh? Mine too! Oh, and hey, it's my turn to clean the classroom, but can you do it? I got plans after school. Huh? No, I gotta get home and... What was that? You talking back to me now? No. I'll do it. Good. Good to hear. Don't forget my homework. Okay. Kids at school were pretty mean to me, but it wasn't all bad. As long as I did what they told me, they didn't bother me. So, I didn't have friends, so that kind of sucked, but whatever. I'm home! Hey, Mom. Dinner's ready. Thanks, dear. But hey, you know you don't have to cook dinner for me every night, right? If you want, you can go out and play with your friends, you know? And if you want to play sports, you can do that too. Oh, uh, thanks. But I'm good. You sure? Am I being a burden on you? What? No, of course not! I was always the quiet type, but that wasn't the only reason I didn't have friends. Back in elementary school, I had some friends that asked me to hang out with them, but I always said no. Soon, everyone stopped inviting me. I said no because I wanted to come home early and do housework. Mom was working long hours to support me, so I wanted to chip in. I can't just play with my friends while Mom is out there working. You do have friends, right? Of course, Mom! Takeshi? Sunio? I got a lot of friends. Okay. Sunio was bragging about this new video game he got. Then Takeshi told him to let him use it for a while, and they got in a huge fight. It took me a while to stop them, you know. Okay. We made plans to hang out during summer vacation, too, so no worries, Mom. It was all a lie, but whatever. I didn't want to worry my mom. Then one day, I was reading at my desk during recess as usual. Then my teacher called me. Masashi! It's your mother! What? What happened? She collapsed during her shift. Then... She passed away. She had a heart attack. No, no, this is all my fault! I should have done more for her! Why? Why? I was so upset. I couldn't leave the house for a few weeks. Then I had to move into a foster home. I had to switch schools. All my grandparents were dead and I had no relatives. I was all alone now. Listen up, guys. Masashi is moving. Today will be his last day here. Go on, Masashi. Uh, well, I... Did you see the stand-up last night? Yeah, it was hilarious. Hey, quiet down! Um, it's okay, really. Nobody cared that I was moving. I guess I knew that. I left without saying goodbye to anyone. Mom was the only person that cared about me. A few days later, it was my first day at my new school. Hello, I'm Onishi. Ah, right, the new kid. You live in a foster home, right? Kids from foster homes are usually troublemakers. Just behave yourself, got it? Okay. You're so quiet. You remind me of that character Jimmy from that TV show. I know, I'll call you Jimmy from now on. <laughs> Wow, already? I wasn't expecting that. Whatever. Okay, let's get to class! He made me introduce myself in front of the class. What's the point? Nobody's gonna listen to me anyways. I'm Masashi Onishi. Nice to meet you. Wow, look! See? I knew it! Haruto, quiet! The new kid is talking! But look at the Skato Man keychain on his bag! That's the super rare type! Man, that's so cool. I wish I had one of those. Shut up already. Uh, Mr. Shimada, say something. Haruto, quiet, please. Uh, uh. That'll do for now, Jimmy. Take that empty seat over there. Okay, during recess. Yo, Masashi, you like Skato Man too? Huh? Uh, yeah. Me too, man. Oh, I'm Haruto, by the way. Nice to meet you. Uh, sure. Yeah. Haruto, slow down. Hey. 
I'm Ayane. Nice to meet you. I'm the class president. If you need help with anything, just ask, okay? I've known Haruto since he was a kid. He is quite the troublemaker, so watch out for him. What did you say? Oh, okay. This place feels... different. I've never felt anything like this before. I guess I wasn't used to people being nice to me, but then... Jimmy, right? You live in a foster home, right? Your parents abandoned you? Oh, poor you. But can't say that I blame them. I mean, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> True that! I guess there were bullies everywhere. Whatever. It's just how things are, I guess. And they're already calling me Jimmy. Great. Man, your keychain is so cool, man. I want one so badly. You want it? What? No, I can't take that. It's fine. I got two of them. This guy seemed nice, but he was probably just after my keychain. Here. Wow, thank you so much. You sure about this? Sure. You were too nice, man. Here, you can have this then. Huh? It's a Scato Man sticker. Wow, this is a really rare one. I don't even have this. Where'd you get this? <laughs> just got it yesterday. Take good care of it, yeah? Yeah, of course. Haruto, why do you have his keychain? Give it back to him! No, he gave it to me, honest! Is that true? Yeah. Uh, gotta go to practice. Later, guys! Wait, you're lying, aren't you? Wait! Huh? He's telling the truth. Uh, maybe they're different after all. Come to think of it, when they're around, nobody says anything mean to me. Maybe... No way. They're no different from the others. They're just pretending to be nice. I'm sure of it. Then one day... My gym clothes are gone. My flute is gone too. What? You sure? Yeah, I put it in my bag. I had my stuff in my locker. What's going on? Mr. Shimada, their gym clothes and flute, it's gone missing. What? Things like this have been happening a lot lately. He was right. People were losing things a lot in the past couple of weeks. I thought it was just a coincidence at first, but... What are you saying? Maybe we got a thief among us. What? And I think I know who it is. What? Who? Come clean now. It'll make things easier for you. I know living in a foster home and being broke is tough. You're stealing stuff from your classmates and selling them, aren't you? Just admit it. Come on. Huh? But stealing is wrong no matter what. Come on. Come clean. This is your last chance. Nobody said anything. Wait, is he talking to me? He thinks I'm the thief? Fine. I'm really disappointed in you, Jimmy. I mean, Onishi. Come see me after school. Huh? We gotta talk. Then he left the classroom. It was you? How dare you? Give it back, asshole! I didn't do anything! Shut up! Admit it! They're trying to pin this on me! I didn't do anything! Everyone was glaring at me, but then Haruto stood up. What the hell, guys? Why are you so convinced that it was him? The teacher said it himself! Yeah, and he's always staring at me like a creep. It was him. Masashi would never do that. He lives in a foster home, right? So he must be dirt poor. That's why he was stealing stuff and selling it. You're awful! I said I didn't do it! I believe him too. He wouldn't do this. You too? Fine then! You got proof of his innocence? Huh? You got proof that he did it? That's what I thought. Mr. Shimada said it himself. He's the thief. Fine, I'll get you guys the proof by tomorrow. Haruto, let's go. Yeah, we're gonna prove to everyone that Masashi is innocent. Haruto, Ayane. I was happy that they were standing up for me, but how are they gonna find evidence by tomorrow? I went to see Mr. Shimada after school. I'm here. Jimmy. Look, I didn't do it. That's what they all say. I'm serious, I'm telling you the truth. Huh? What is that? Something was sticking out of his drawer. It looked like a bag. I recognized it from somewhere. I've seen that before, but where? I can't remember. What are you talking about? Stop staring at my desk. Oh, uh, sorry. Look, admit what you did. Otherwise, there'll be hell to pay. If you want to stay in this school, you better admit what you did. But I didn't do anything. But he didn't listen to me. He made me go home that day. What am I supposed to do now? Do I even have a choice? That night I couldn't sleep. The next day, I was all out of ideas. Masashi, hey! Morning. Haruto, Ayane, 
Hey! I'm sorry, man. We couldn't find anything. I'm so sorry. It's okay, really. I'm just glad that you guys believed me. We couldn't find proof, but we got some clues. Clues? Yeah. Some of the kids saw someone wandering around in our classroom while everyone was in the music room. What? Who? Well... I was shocked! But wait... The bag! I get it now! I told Haruto and Ayane what I saw yesterday. Maybe we can get the evidence we need after all. Yeah. Alright everyone! Sit down! We're having an emergency school meeting today! Everyone get to the gym! It's about the school fee! What? He was smiling at me for some reason. What's gonna happen to me? Haruto? Yeah. I tried to ask for help, but they walked away before I could say anything. When we all got to the gym, Mr. Shimada got up on stage and started talking. Jimmy? I mean, Onishi? Come up here, please. Huh? Go on, Jimmy. Yeah, go. I was forced to go up on the stage. The other teachers didn't even try to help me. I heard Mr. Shimada's father was the head of the Board of Education. Is that why nobody was trying to help me? I regret to inform you that we have a thief among us. But rest assured, we got him. It was him! Jimmy Onishi! I didn't do anything! He denies it, but we got proof! Come on, show us! What are you doing? He came towards me and took out a pair of scissors. Then he cut up my pants and pulled them down. Look! I told you! That's my handkerchief! Mine too! I knew it was him! I didn't do it! But nobody believed me! Everyone in the gym started yelling at me! I was finished! Now everyone thinks I'm a thief! My parents would be disappointed! I'm so sorry, Mom and Dad! Hold it right there! What is it, Ayane? Onishi didn't do it! Give it a rest! You got proof? Actually, I do! She pulled down the projector screen and hooked up her laptop! It was Haruto! Hey guys! Can you hear me? I'm at the teacher's office right now! What the hell is this?! What's he doing there? What's going on? It's a live stream. This is Mr. Shimada's desk. Let's take a look in his drawer. Look what we got. Stop! Haruto opened his drawer. It was filled with gym clothes and flutes that belonged to the girls in our class. That bag I saw yesterday. I saw one of the girls in my class using it. She had her gym clothes in them. What the? Is that mine? That's my flute! This is nonsense! They're trying to frame me! By the way, my mom is watching this too. Just in case you forgot, she's the head of the PTA. Man, look at all this stuff! Mr. Shimada, explain yourself! I'm screwed! Ayane's mom, the president of the PTA, reported this to the Board of Education. As a result, every single teacher in the school was punished for letting this go on. And soon, everyone found out about all the things they did. They could no longer teach anywhere. Mr. Shimada got arrested and lost his teaching license. His father, the head of the Board of Education, disowned him as well. Then someone made a wanted sign with his face and posted it online. Sucks for him. After that, nobody saw him again. Who knows what he's up to now? And Haruto and Ayane yelled at the other students for me. Ayane's mom told their parents about it too, so they got grounded too. Then they apologized to me. After that, they actually started letting me in. For the first time in my life, I had friends. And it was all because of Haruto and Ayane. Hey Masashi, let's go see that Skato Man movie this weekend. Okay, wait, let's go today. I got no practice today. Ah, that sounds good too. Oh wait, it's our turn to clean the classroom after school. Oh, forget it, we'll just sneak out. What was that? Crap, run Masashi! Oh, okay. Wait up! Mom. I finally made some real friends! Back then I was lying to you, but I guess you kind of knew that. But not anymore. You don't have to worry about me anymore, okay? When I see you again in heaven, I'll tell you all about them, alright? Until then, watch over me. Masashi, run! Hurry! Uh, yeah, right. Um, guys? Thank you so much for everything. Huh? What are you talking about? I said, wait! Stop now! Okay, let's run! Yeah! Stop, you two! Right now! Dad, here! Huh? It's for you. Hmm, thank you. That'll be 50 yen. What? Give it to me now! This is Omaibo, right? Isn't it 10 yen? Hurry up! Right, well, okay. Here. <laughs> the Straw Millionaire is a great success! The 10 yen no mai will become 50 yen! With this, I'll become a step closer to becoming Sumomo Buffet! 
Hey! Sumomo? Why are you running a ruthless business? Mom, this is efficient. It's called investment. Investment? I'll be the best investor in the world! Stop talking nonsense! Yori, you're just the same. Why did you give her 50 yen? Well, it's an investment. What? Even you're investing? Don't you think it's exciting to see what Sumomo will do to this 50 yen? I'd like to give her more, to be honest. Don't you think so, Himari? You're right, but no! If we want Sumomo to become a decent adult, we have to educate her properly. Don't worry. I'm sure Sumomo will grow up to be a decent adult. How can you be so sure? Because she's just like you until you were in high school. Huh? Just like me? You've grown up to be such a great adult, so I'm sure she'll be fine. I wasn't like her. Do you want to see a video of yourself bringing a rice cooker and cooking rice in class and getting scolded by the teacher? <laughs> oh, don't remind me of my dark past. Mom, you're so cool! Sumomo, don't ever do that! Don't be like me! I'm Himari. I think I'm a decent adult. She's fine, right? I've lost my confidence a little. I live with my husband, Iori, and my daughter, Sumomo, who is a little... No, quite strange. Every day with this family is really hectic, but very enjoyable. We're actually getting married soon. You think it's too late for that, right? But with the birth of Sumomo and Iori's transfer overseas, Five years had passed without a wedding. I had already given up, but when Iori came back from his overseas assignment, he said, let's do it. To be honest, I'm happy because I've always wanted to wear a wedding dress. I think Iori knew that and insisted on having her wedding. Then one day, when Iori was away for work, my brother and his wife, Kaori, came to visit us. I heard you're having a wedding. Congratulations, Himari. I'm so happy for you. I've always wanted to see you in your wedding dress. Jeez, you're too loud. You really love your sister so much. Mahimari, how can you even try to have a wedding at your age? Aren't you embarrassed? A wedding dress won't suit you. What are you talking about? Himari is only 28. Of course it'll look good on her. Besides, Himari would look good in it even if she was 30, 40, or 100 years old. I'm sure. Thanks, bro. But calm down a little. Tori doesn't seem to like me very much. I think it's because my brother loves me so much. I'm sure she's harassing me like this out of jealousy. Kaori! Why will mom look good in a wedding dress? Sumomo, that's because your mom is already old, you know? See? Your mom's skin is already saggy, right? I see. Then you won't look good in a wedding dress, Kaori! Why not? Look! Your belly is all saggy! It's so bouncy! Don't pinch me! <laughs> Don't laugh at me, Himari! Here, Kaori! I'll give you this. Protein? Oh, that's Iori's. If you put on muscle, you'll lose weight. I saw it on TV. Drink protein and do muscle training. <laughs> it's none of your business, but I'll take it. 50 yen. Sumomo. What? You're taking money? And it's 50 yen for a cup? I won't give up a single cent. <laughs> Fine. Oh, she's buying it? She must be so worried about her belly. <laughs> Good luck, Audi. Shut up. Well, we're gonna go. Make your wedding a big cry for your brother. Imari, adios. Maybe I'll buy some protein when I get back. Well then, excuse me. With that, they went home. What a great business. Oh, hey, Samomo. You can't sell Yori's protein without permission. I was about to pay no attention to Samomo's outlandish behavior. This is an investment. I don't even know if it's an investment or not anymore. Anyway, you can't sell people's stuff. If you're going to sell people stuff, I'll ban you from investing. Ugh, okay. I won't sell it. Make sure you apologize to your dad. Okay. I don't even know what I'm saying. What do I mean, no investment? I want to let Samomo do as freely as possible and develop her potential. But I have to put a stop to where it needs to stop. It's hard to know where to stop, though. A few months have passed since then. And there is only a few weeks left until the wedding. While we're busy preparing for the wedding, Kaori my brother's wife, came to our house alone. I wonder what's going on. Kaori, is everything okay? Himari, I came here for you. What? You're here to see me? Yes. Give me the gift of money. What? My husband says he'll wrap a gift of money for your wedding. He's insane, right? How could he give a gift of money to such an old woman's wedding? So, give me back the gift. What are you talking about? I haven't even received it yet. So what? Give it back before you get it then. Hurry up! 50,000 yen will do. No! Huh? 
What? I'm home. T Yuri's back. Oh, Kaori, what's wrong? Nothing. Kaori told Mom to give the gift of money back. Sumomo, you heard us? The gift of money? Oh, here, 50 yen. I'll give it back to you. Mom told me off. I don't want it. Well, I'm leaving. With that, Kaori left. Seriously, what does she mean by giving back the gift of money? I haven't even received it yet. If she hates me so much, she shouldn't come. That's what I was thinking. Then came the day of the wedding. Kari was there, but she was in a bad mood the whole time. She's staring at me. Oh well, I'll just ignore her and enjoy the wedding. Hey, Marie. Oh, the wedding dress looks good on you. You look so cool, Mom! <laughs> Thank you, guys. I really had a great time. It's not a wedding right after we got married, but I'm so happy to be able to have the wedding with Sumomo. Maybe this was the right time for it. Ah, <laughs> Mari. I, I wish you all the happiness. <laughs> By the way, my brother cried so hard that he shocked all the people at the wedding. It was so embarrassing. Oh, but I had such a great time. I'm so thankful to Yori for suggesting we have it. And of course, to everyone who's here. After the wedding and reception ended without a hitch, we checked our gift of money to pay the venue. Then... Huh? What's wrong? 121 yen! What is? The gift of money we got for my brother. What? You're kidding me, right? Look! Oh, you're right. I can understand if it's empty, but... 121 yen? Was it on purpose? But your brother isn't the kind who would do something like this. I know. I don't think my brother would do that either. <gasps> wow! 121 yen! That's a lot of money! I'm going to express my gratitude. Huh? Hey, Samoa, wait! Samoa, wait! With that, Samoa ran off. When we followed Samoa, we see my brother and Kaori. Then, Samoa starts shouting, Thank you for giving us 121 yen! I'm so grateful! I can buy 12 of my bowls! What? 121 yen? Oh, <laughs> yeah! There is 121 yen in the gift of money. The others only gave us three pieces of paper with pompous old man on it. But you guys gave us 121 yen! I'm happy. What do you mean? Uh, hey, bro. The gift of money you gave us was 121 yen. What? You're kidding, right? No. Did you put it in the wrong envelope? I wrapped 100,000 yen. What? Yes, I'm sure I did. Isn't this some kind of misunderstanding? Yes, I'm sure I saw you wrap 100,000 yen too. Hari is kind of in a panic. Come to think of it, she said something strange about returning the gift of money. Could it be her? No, it's definitely her. Kaori? You seem to know something. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, I don't know anything. Oh, she's so shaken. Are you sure? Uh, uh, are you... <laughs> are you doubting me? Kaori! Huh? Sumomo? Then Sumomo starts running. What? To show my gratitude, I'll give you this! What are you doing? Then, Sumomo put something in Kaori's bag. This is my treasure! This guy is Scarafagio! A cool guy! Scarafagio? What's that? What? Scarafagio? Oh, that guy. You know what it is, Yuri? Yes, because I bought it for Sumomo. Huh? And when Kaori looked inside the bag... Jeez! Why did you put that in there? Kari turns a bag upside down and from inside... Ah! A cockroach? I'm glad you liked it. Scarfagu, live well with Kari. A cockroach came out of the bag. Yori, what is this? You bought her a cockroach? Don't worry, it's just a toy. What? You know, Sumomo really wanted it. And what is Scarafaggio? Oh, a uh, cockroach is called Scarafaggio in Italian. Is that so? Yeah. You know, she was into playing Italian Mafia for a while, right? That's how she learned it. Wow. I hope there isn't any more in there. This bag was expensive. Kari was still turning the bag upside down then. Oh! Out comes the big guy! Huh? The big guy? Uh, oh! No! Don't look! Then, from Kaori's bag, 10 bills with Yukichi Fukuzawa on them comes out of the bag. Isn't this Kaori? Could this possibly be the gift of money? N no, 
This is not the gift of money. No, this is the gift of money I wrapped for Himari and her family. I'm telling you, it's not. There's no proof. Er, uh, the bills are all new, so I'm almost 100% sure it's the gift of money. This is my secret saving. No, there's proof. Huh? Proof? What proof? Look at this. There's a sticky note on each 10,000 yen bill, and something is written on them. Bro, what's that? This is a letter from me to Himari. Each piece has a message of about 400 words. Um, it's too detailed to read. That's the proof. Kaori, you took out the 100,000 yen from the congratulatory gift bag, didn't you? <sighs> it looks like there's no escaping now. That's right, I did it. What have you done? Because... Because I was jealous of Himari! Jealous of Himari? You only love Himari. You don't even pay attention to me. That's not true. I love you, Kaori. You liar, that's a lie! I can't be! No, Kaori, it's true. Huh? How did you know that's a Momo? Look at this. Huh? When did you take my phone? Stop it! Sumo! What? Me? Yup, my brother had a picture of Kaori as his wallpaper. <laughs> Look at his pendant too! The pendant? Oh no, this is... Stop! Don't look! Bro, show it to us! No, hey, not this one. Hand it over! <sighs> yes, ma'am. On the pendant is a picture of Kaori. Hey, you love Kaori so much. <sighs> I'm so embarrassed. You... You loved me? I told you so! I didn't know. This happened because you didn't tell her how you feel daily. You should be sorry. Sorry. Kaori, you should never steal from the gift of money. Before you do something like that, please talk it over as a couple first. I'm sorry. I guess all's well that ends well. Listen up, everyone. Buffet once said, The only way to get love is to be lovable. The more you give love away, the more you get. Keep that in mind. Okay. Well done, Sumomo. I'm glad I bought you Scarafaggio, Sumomo. It was a great investment. Yeah! And so the case was settled. Afterwards, Kaori gave us a gift of money. She also gave us the honeymoon as a gift. Saying she was sorry for all the trouble she caused. Actually, we never had the chance to go on our honeymoon, too. She even offered to take care of Sumomo with my brother while we're away. Well, Kaori, thank you for looking after Sumomo for me. Sure! Leave Kaori to me! No, I'm leaving you to Kaori, you know. See you. Have a great time. Thank you! Sumomo, won't you miss us? I have no time to be upset. I found my next goal! What? What's your next goal? I'm gonna be king of the pirates! King of the pirates? That's right! While mom and dad are away, I'm gonna get my hands on the hidden treasure. But first, you're going to learn more about money over 1,000 yen. Since you were aiming to become the god of investment, okay? Huh? You didn't know about 10,000 yen the other day, did you? Dad? Mom? Take me with you! I'm going to the Grand Line after all! Good luck with your studies, Simomo! You heartless wretch! Where did you learn words like that? Well then, Simomo, good luck! I'll buy you some souvenirs! Wait! Wait for me! Give up already. Let's study. Then, Iori and I were able to enjoy our honeymoon. I'd given up on our honeymoon, but I never thought we'd get to go. We had several video calls with Kari and Tsumomo during our honeymoon, and Tsumomo was exhausted from Kari's intensive study. But it seems that Tsumomo was not only studying, but was also taken to an amusement park, and she talked about it enthusiastically. She said she found out Mickey's identity on the phone, but I hope she didn't do anything strange in the land of dreams. I'm so worried. Let's buy lots of souvenirs for Sumomo. Yeah, let's buy lots of weird stuff that Sumomo would like. And, next time, let's go on a trip with the three of us as a family. Of course. Oh, and of course, we'll buy some souvenirs for Kaori and my brother, too. Since the incident, Kaori and I have become very close. Like real sisters. We have to complain about my brother. What did Sumomo do in the land of dreams? I won't tell you that. I had to scold Simomo and apologize to the land of dreams. But anyway, Simomo was a major player in this case. Thanks to Simomo, everything came full circle as we are. This girl really is amazing. I hope I can continue to nurture Simomo so that she can develop her good qualities. 
I'm Takuya, a college student. My specialty is getting dumped by women. I don't mean to brag, but my face is decent and I'm not the type to yell or be rough, so I usually have no problem making a girlfriend. However... You're too serious all the time and it's no fun. I thought you were smart. You're not exactly what I imagined. These are just a few of the reasons I get dumped. The shortest I've dated is three days, and the longest is two months. I was once dumped for being too bad of a singer, which is a pretty miserable reason to be dumped. I'm actually so used to being dumped that every time I make a new girlfriend, I fantasize on what the next reason I'll be dumped would be. Wait, how much you like being punished? What do you mean you fantasize what the next reason is? I'm actually surprised you don't just give up after all those tries. These are my best friends, Unke and Kaike. They're not even brothers, but they've been best friends since middle school. Pretty insane, right? I was so surprised that I decided I would be friends with them the second I entered uni. They actually seem to be great people. We're still good friends into our third year in college. Of course I can't give up! I like girls! The soft atmosphere around them, the feeling of blossoming flowers around her when they smile... I get what you mean, but... You're only talking to them without thinking about the future. That definitely gives off the wrong vibes and makes them run away from you. You both only date because it kind of felt good. That's right, Takuya. You should really pick your partners before just jumping into a relationship. If you don't do that, you're just gonna continue getting dumped. After this conversation, I was shocked back into reality with how true what they were saying was. I would jump into relationships the moment I looked at them and felt anything. I should have taken more time and really considered if I liked them or not. Yeah, most people figured that out in middle school. Seriously? How old are you again? Point is, you need to make sure that you take the time to really get to know someone before asking them out. Also, definitely show them the best parts of you. There's no point in them just liking your looks. Ah, got it. What should I do first about that? Figure, Figure it, it out, out yourself. yourself! After thinking about it for a while, I decided to join a club. Up until this point, I asked out girls that I met in class. I didn't really know them. If I spent more time with them in a club, I should be able to really understand them before asking them out. That will really help me out with my problem of getting dumped. So I decided to join the soccer club. That's a pretty pitiful reason to join a club in your third year of college. At least Takuya thought about it and came to the decision on his own. Good luck! We're rooting for you! What do you mean? You two are totally coming too! I already put in the registration forms for us. WHY?! As a result of all three of us joining the soccer club, I ended up finding a girlfriend that I could date for a while. Her name was Karin, and she's really beautiful. Her hobby of making snacks is the same as mine. She buys caramel popcorn at the movie theaters, and we love the same foods. I took you guys' advice, and now I'm breaking my longest dating record. Unke, Kaike, thank you both so much. Oh wow, congratulations! Take care of Karin, okay? Oh yeah, you're invited to our wedding. That's a little farther down the line, don't you think? Yeah, you should probably think about your career first. I'm not looking forward to trying to find you a job. I'm lucky because I have a job lined up with my uncle. I don't have to worry about job hunting. You're so lucky. What are you gonna do, Takuya? Do you have any idea? I don't care what I do as long as I marry Karin. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Unke and Kaike were both sick of me, but I was serious. If I can get enough to take care of Karin and marry her, I don't care. I'm gonna work so hard for you, Karin. Once we go out into the world and settle down, let's get married. Okay, I'll be looking forward to being your wife. However, I got dumped. What? Seriously? I was dumped. As soon as I told her where I got a job, she dumped me. What the heck? Where did you find a job? Uwasa Marketing Co. That's a great company! Business associate, child company's business partner. What What's is that? that? I'm not sure, but maybe Karin- I don't want to date someone who's working at some insignificant company. Is exactly what she said. Uh, why? I was doing so good. We went to the library, had dates on days off. I even washed my hands before holding hers. Your dates sound like a middle schooler planned them. More like elementary school, but anyways. I don't want to say this, Takuya. But if she's dumping you for that, then she's probably insignificant. He's right. There's lots of women in this world. You always got back up after getting dumped. You got this. I know, but I was planning on marrying her. I feel so bad for myself. <laughs> I mean, that does suck. All right, this means we drink. We'll buy. Yeah, let's drink and forget about her. Unke and Kaike took me to a bar near the ocean. I was yelling at the ocean the whole night, screaming, Are you kidding me? What's wrong with a small company? But to be honest, I liked you a lot! I wanna try again! Then I got hungover and sick. Afterwards, 
everything kind of went back to normal. I started working at the small, insignificant company. About a year after I was dumped by Karin, I met someone very special. Guys, listen! There's a new, really cute girl in our department. I think I can get over Karin! That's awesome! You're still going on about Karin? I thought you were over her considering how you kept making us snacks. Well, to add the cherry to the Sunday, she was in the same middle school as me! She was a year younger than me. Isn't that destiny? Yeah, maybe it is, but don't be too aggressive, alright? We've told you before, but we'll tell you again. Make sure you learn about the person before asking her out. I know. I don't want to screw up like I did with Karin. I'll find out if she's in it for the money or not. Yeah, I like your thinking, but... Definitely don't start off by asking her if she's a gold digger or not. She'll dump you for sure. Yeah, I'll be careful. In the end, I ended up dating the girl from middle school. Her name is Nao, and she's incredibly cute. Nao, are you sure you want to date me? I like how sweet and cute you are, but if you're not serious about me, you can tell me now. How many times are you going to ask that? I like that you're funny and fun to be around. I really do like you. Sometimes you can be a little too much for me, but... Sorry. I'll be super calm around you from now on. How should I do that? Maybe talk with a lower voice? Uh, uh... <clears throat> I'm Takuya, the gentleman. <laughs> like that? Takuya? <laughs> Just be you. If you're kind as usual, then that's all I need. No, you're too kind. I really like you so much. I'll take care of you, okay? This was definitely the most special moment in my life. I was pretty happy with Karin, but I could tell I was getting tired of dealing with when Karin was in a bad mood. Come to think of it, Karin was probably pretty self-centered. There was a time I went to pick her up and she showed up hungover. She ended up canceling. Another time, I said I didn't have enough money to pay for the store. She stormed off because she was unhappy. To add to everything, after she dumped me, she blocked me immediately and ignored me completely at school. Compared to Karin, Nao was an angel. She's not selfish, and she's always thankful I pick her up. She never complains about where we eat, either. Nao! I'm really lucky to have you! <laughs> uh, why are you crying? You're scaring me. We were getting along great and enjoyed our relationship. Nao's dad is actually a great person, too. He looks like a gorilla, but he's super nice. Well, I'm glad you look happy, but you probably shouldn't call her parents a gorilla. More importantly, why are you wearing a suit? You going somewhere? Oh yeah, Now said come say hi to my parents. Whoa, really? You're getting married soon, eh? Congrats! I was really confused why they were so happy. I asked them, what are you two talking about? Marriage? That's a little fast, isn't it? I do intend to eventually, but... What's she mean, come say hi then? Is there a reason to go to the girlfriend's house if you're not gonna ask for her hand in marriage? Oh yeah, that's because... SERIOUSLY?! The two of them jumped up in surprise after what I said. About half a year later, we were all dressed up. I'll be honest, I never expected to be at Karin's wedding. She called all the club friends, including me. How insensitive can you get? We were at Karin's wedding. All the club friends are coming, so it would be awkward if you didn't show up. If you don't have any money, then we'll accept only a hundred dollars. I swear, if you don't show up... She threatened me and forced me to show up. If I ignored her, she'd just keep calling me. I ended up having to show up. According to Umke, Karin works at an office at the university. Because of that, our club coach would be there. She wanted to earn his trust, so she wanted everyone there. I ended up having to use my valuable time off to go to this stupid event. I guess it's not too bad if I think of this as a class reunion. That's true. It's nice to see everyone again. Plus, the food is excellent! Exactly. Just think of this as a fancy class reunion. We were pretty upset at first, but we turned it around together. Then this happened to ruin our mood. Aw, you showed up! Yeah, congrats, Karin. Thanks. I'm sorry I forced your poor self to pay for celebration. She decided to talk smack when she was doing her greetings. You serious? He showed up cause you asked him to! He's right. We didn't want to come either, but you begged us. There was static in the air. The other tables couldn't hear us whispering, but they could see there was something up. 
People started worrying. Just at that moment... Wait! You're- The groom started sweating beads after looking at me. What's wrong, Ryota? Who cares about him? I care! This gentleman is lined up to be the next CEO of my company! This gentleman? Huh? You're talking to Takuya? After seeing the panicking groom, I knew what I needed to do. Oh, you're that person I saw the other day. Who were you? Uh, Takano from the other branch? <laughs> yes, sir! Sorry that my wife was being so rude. It's alright. Karin probably didn't know I switched jobs. Switch jobs? What do you mean? You work at some insignificant company. I told you, he's one of our employees! And he's engaged to the CEO's daughter! Huh? I told you about the daughter getting engaged and her fiancé being in line for becoming the CEO. This gentleman is that person I was talking about! Takuya? Next CEO? Huh? Exactly. About half a year ago, I was called to her house to greet. The greeting was to all the employees. I told the father that I was dating about a year ago. He really took a liking to me and said, Why don't you join our family? I had no real reason to say no, and I was madly in love with now, so I said I was perfectly fine with that. Apparently he really liked that, so he told me, I will leave the company in your hands. You're the next CEO. Of course, I turned the offer down. I didn't think I was qualified to become a CEO. That's probably a good idea. The company would probably collapse under your direction. <laughs> I feel like it'd be gone in a week. Okay, calm down, guys. Anyways, I said no, I can't. But then the father told me that a CEO needs that kind of humility. Don't worry, I'll give you a good secretary to work with. Just learn slowly. So I couldn't refuse, and now I'm in line to be CEO. That is one relaxed company. Are the employees okay with that? I mean, it's just an experiment for now. If I can't handle it, I'll just resign. No one really took it too serious. Honestly, maybe this company is perfect for you. Also kind of makes sense why now so chill. Her father's incredibly chill too. Kind of makes sense. Anyway, I'm temporarily the CEO in line. I look forward to working with you. Oh, also, Karin is annoying, but no hard feelings towards you. Don't sweat it, okay? Yes, sir! I'm so sorry! Karin, apologize! What? Why? I didn't do anything wrong! It would have been nice if it had just ended there, but... I shouldn't have dumped Takuya. If I had married him, I could have been the CEO's wife. Uh, I made a mistake. Uh... Karin always was a bad drunk. Her words turned the whole wedding into a storm. You could feel the static in the air over her insensitive statement. It wasn't a huge deal at the wedding, but after everyone left, I saw a commotion when I went to get something I forgot. What do you mean you should have stayed with him?! How could you say such a thing right after the marriage ceremony? I'm so sorry. It just slipped out. Please forgive me. I could hear what you were talking about. You dumped him because he was working at some small company? You're just a gold digger, aren't you? You only see Ryota for his money, right? No, I married him because I love him. I don't trust you! We're done! No, wait! Please don't, I'm so sorry! These are just rumors, but apparently, they never got married. I guess her parents also chased her out because they got tired of her. Heard she's couch surfing between her friends, but she gets chased off because she's so rotten. The professor was there too. Apparently the university caught wind, and she quit her job because it was too awkward. Yeah, apparently she wanders the streets at night, but who knows what's true. I kind of feel bad for her, honestly. If she didn't force you to go to the wedding, this would have never happened. Seriously, revenge is a dish best served cold, huh? Afterwards, I got married to now. We now have kids and are living a great life. I'm still next in line to be CEO, but for now, I'm still just a regular employee. I'm busting my butt every day. It's tiring, but now and Mao are at home, so I'm in a great mood. I like how positive you are. Now, let's have a wonderful family from now on. I still hang out with Unke and Kaike. They come over from time to time. I was tired of getting dumped, but the real ones stayed close to me. My life has been pretty nice, honestly. I hope it keeps going this way. Hiya! Daya throws the ball! Now, look out! Huh? Ah! Ugh, I'm all dirty now! My name is Nanami. The person who came crying to me is my daughter. Now, the kid that threw the mud ball at my daughter is the troublemaker, Daya. Hey, Ririka! Hmm? What's up? Can you please look after your own son? Hmm? Did Daya do something? The long-haired woman is Ririka, Daya's mother. She had Daya after having fertility treatments. She loves to say, Daya is my adorable prince. 
Because of this, she's a huge pushover to him. She never scolds Daya for doing anything. Aw, Daya is all muddy. You're so energetic today, too. Can you look at my daughter and say that, please? Oh, wow. I'm so sorry. My little Daya is so good at throwing, he never misses his target. His target? Did you just call my daughter a target? Look, Daya has another mud ball. Aw, he does. Boys can be so rowdy. That's not what I'm saying. Ugh, never mind. Everyone run away. He's going to hit you. Even when I protest with the other mothers, Ririka doesn't scold her son ever. She's always like this. Even when Daya is at the restaurant not behaving, she just says, Ah, Daya is so full of energy. Even if Daya is pulling out all the clothes at the store. Ah, there's so many colors of clothes. And she's laughing while taking photos of it. Even when he eats food at the supermarket. You are so hungry. I'll take care of the money later, so just eat up. And just like that, she never scolds him ever. Ugh, oh, that makes me so mad. I'm sorry now. I can't stop them. It's okay, Mom. Daya has always been like this in kindergarten, so I got used to it. Ririka's husband is apparently away on leave for work, so he's almost never home. As a result, Daya is just doing whatever he wants. Sometimes, the grandparents come, but they're just like the mom. They love to spoil their grandchild. Apparently, no one gets mad at them in their household. The kindergarten teacher scolds the kids sometimes, but as soon as the teacher scolds him, he runs to his mom. Then the teacher and the mom get into a fight, which leads to the teacher just giving up. I feel bad for the teacher. Ugh, Daya is such a troublemaker. You guys are lucky that Daya is in another school district. Now is in the same elementary school as Daya too, isn't she? Seriously, it seems like now is also not good with handling Daya. I really hope they at least end up in different classrooms. But unfortunately, they ended up in the same classroom. And by the luck of the draw, I ended up with the same board position as Ririka. What did I do in my past life to deserve this? Oh, maybe it's because I squashed that cockroach the other day. Am I being cursed? The curse of the cockroach? Relax, Nanami. Just because you two are in the same position at school, you'll only see each other sometimes, right? If it's too much, I'll be sure to put in a word. You're that relaxed because you don't know how evil those two can get. Ugh, this is so depressing. As expected, she doesn't do her job or she makes me do her work for her. It was dreadful. And the reason is because Daya wants to go to the park with me, so please handle the accounting on your own. Please go buy supplies for tomorrow on your own. Daya wants to go watch the new Scott Rangers movie, so I've decided to go to that instead. Daya, Daya, Daya. Do the work you were assigned to do! Nanami, you're scaring me. You're making a gorilla face. Are you calling me a gorilla? I'm sorry, I'll help you with the accounting and supply runs. Don't get angry! I was able to finish my official work assigned because my husband helped me, but I really can't stand Ririka, and I want to make that family really pay. It turns out, they actually made me pay. Because of Daya causing problems at school, an emergency meeting was conducted by the Guardians. I thought maybe this was my chance to get my word out, but it turns out Ririka was prepared, and that was by some strange logic that she has about raising her kids. On to the next subject, about some kids and their problematic behavior. What? There are kids with problematic behaviors? I really hope Daya doesn't get teased. What are you talking about, Ririka? Daya is the one causing problems! Yeah, he dropped my kid's pencil case and broke it. He threw my kid's notebook into the pool and made it unusable! He stepped all over my kid's clothes and made it all dirty! All the Guardians started complaining. I guess that if enough of the Guardians complained, Ririka would be more compliant. But Ririka is not the understanding type. Aw, Daya is all rowdy at school too. It's okay, everyone. Are you going to make sure to take care of it at home? What are you talking about? To not bother the other kids at school? No, I would never do that. I don't want to be a terrifying parent. Then what are you talking about it'll be okay? Being rowdy just means he's healthy. He'll calm down as he grows up. That's why I'm saying it'll be okay. Don't worry about us. Yeah, we're not concerned about Daya's well-being. We're asking you to figure it out because it's causing problems. You guys look so scary. Calm down. I want Daya to grow up unhindered. I think you're misunderstanding the definition of unhindered. You all had kids without having to go to fertility treatment. I spent a lot of money going through treatment to have him. That's why I can't get past how cute he is. I don't want to get all angry with him. Uh, we love our kids too. That's exactly why we scold them. 
You scold your dogs and cats. You shouldn't have to scold your human child. If they grow up unhindered, they'll naturally grow up into adults. If you want your kids to grow into great adults, you probably shouldn't mess with their development too much either. After talking about this for two hours, Ririka didn't change her opinion. After a while, we were too tired to even argue further. Even the teacher was tired of it. Let's just have another session to talk about it another time. She bowed and apologized as she left. It's pretty incredible that this experienced teacher looked defeated. Ririka is a force to be reckoned with. We should stay away from Ririka and Daya. Yeah, our words are definitely falling on deaf ears. We just have to protect ourselves. We concluded that we should tell our kids not to be around Daya. Then we return to our normal routines. However, trouble doesn't wait for us to find it. Is that Daya? I go to a spa once a month to take a breather, and it turns out that Daya was there. More importantly, this is the woman's side. Why is there an elementary school age kid in the woman's side? As I was looking for Ririka, I found her taking her time washing her long hair. She didn't even care that Daya is running around like a madman. <sighs> I came here to relax. I'm just gonna take a quick bath and leave. I plan to take a bath and leave ASAP before Daya noticed me, but... What is that stomach? Gross! He started yelling stuff like that out loud. I looked over at the direction he was looking at. There was a lady that was about eight months pregnant. He was putting his tongue out at her in disgust. What do you mean a pregnant lady is gross? Where do you think you came from? Let me go ahead and tuck it in. Daya jumped into the bath and tried punching the lady's belly. I moved as fast as I could, but I didn't make it in time. Run away, lady. Hey. What are you doing? As the pregnant woman was frozen in shock, someone came between the woman and Daya at the speed of sound. I couldn't tell who it was at first. It was so foggy. Huh? Haru? It was the old lady that lived in our neighborhood. She had learned wrestling or judo or swordsmanship. I don't remember, but she had said she exercised. She's normally so friendly and so nice, but here she was gripping Daya's arm tightly. Ow! Stop! Let go! You're not going to punch the pregnant lady, right? No, I won't! Please let me go! After Daya started crying, she let go. How could you, Daya? Is your stomach okay? Yeah, I'm okay. He didn't hit me, thank you. It's okay, don't mention it. I'm just glad you're okay. Who are you and what are you trying to do? After being let go, Daya was trying to sneak away. He jumped in terror. I just fell over and almost hit her. Shut up! I saw it. You're lying. You went to punch her. I saw it too. Why would you do such a thing? I told you, her stomach was out so I wanted to tuck it in. Do you know what would happen if you did that? There is a baby inside the pregnant woman's body. You should know as an elementary school student. Shut up! My mom told me I can do what I want. What the heck is going on? What happened, Daya? Ririka heard the commotion and showed up. Apparently, she finished her hair care. After I explained what happened, she just scoffed and said, It's just a child being a child. I have the attitude of letting my child do what he wants. When he grows up, he won't be able to do what he wants anymore. That doesn't make it okay to punch a pregnant woman. I do think it's good to grow up without any problems. Haru? See, the wise old lady understands. But you have to at least follow the bare minimum common sense rules. No matter the reason, you should not punch someone who can't fight back. How old are you? Seven. In a pregnant woman's belly, there's life. The older have to protect the young, okay? You're already seven. Take care and protect the young baby. Before I knew it, everyone in the bath was quiet and listening to Haru. The men's bath was also very quiet. I'm guessing that they heard too. I guess Daya picked up that everyone was watching. He started saying, What? Stop looking at me! If you're the parent, you need to teach your kid manners. Kids will grow up if you leave them alone, sure. But that's not development. You also have to grow their hearts too. Sh shut up! I don't need your lecture, old lady. I'm young. There's a different method in teaching nowadays. Yeah, and your method led to this. Uh Haru opened her eyes wide and raised her voice. It was so heavy you could feel it in your chest. Ririka was on the verge of crying, and Daya was already crying. This kid turned into someone who punches the stomachs of pregnant women because you haven't taught your child correctly. If you don't have any intention of educating your child, give the kid up to a church. It'll be better for him in the long run. 
You could hear people quietly agreeing in the big halls. Yeah, you guys are causing trouble. Even from the men's side, they were saying, that kid is just a burden on society. You may think that not getting angry is a form of love, but that's a mistake. Parents who really love their kids scold them because they want their kids to grow up into honest adults. It's a good thing that they are growing up, but you need to teach them where it's important. Exactly. I scold now because I want her to grow up into a good adult. If she does something bad, I tell her no. I don't know what Daya thought, but he was looking between his mom and us. He whispered, Mom doesn't scold me because she doesn't love me? Ririka panicked and said, No, that's completely wrong! Daya looked confused and apologized. He left the bathroom quietly. Ririka chased after him and tripped. She slipped on the bubbles she put there. What kind of irony is that? Later on, Ririka looked completely defeated afterwards. You couldn't tell she was the same person. Apparently, Rika joined a gym. What? A gym? What kind? Karate? Wrestling? The same place that that old lady goes to? Are you talking about Haru? Yeah. According to my kid, when Daya was at the park, she talked to Daya and invited him to come to the gym. I guess they go to the gym every day now. Apparently, that incident caused Daya to think about Ririka's behavior. When he was confused and thinking, Haru invited her into the gym. He decided to go and rethink his values. Afterwards, I met Daya randomly in the town. Oh, lady, I'm so sorry for causing you trouble that one day. Uh-oh, you really grew up, didn't you? You're like a different person. I couldn't make any friends while all the people around me got along. I was always alone. I thought maybe if I teased them, I could make more friends. But then teacher Haru got mad at me and I learned that was wrong. Ah, so you felt bad and joined her gym? Yes. She said I'm still young so I can still do better. I'm learning a lot of important things that my mom couldn't teach me. That's great. I heard your mom also goes to the gym. Is that true? Yeah, she told my mom that if the parent doesn't have common sense, the kids won't learn either. Mom didn't like it, but I told her that I'd be Haru's kid if she didn't go. Wow, that's wonderful. Good luck with your mom in the gym. Yes, ma'am. Because of Haru's training, his behavior had changed drastically. He no longer caused trouble in class. He behaved the way he did because he wanted attention and friends. Daiya is so nice recently. He came to help me out when I was watering the plants. That's wonderful. I hope you two get along from now on. Yeah, he gave me a chocolate for Valentine's. It was handmade. Uh, all right. That's a little different from what I imagined, but at least you two are getting along. As for Ririka, I saw her running out of the gym screaming. I can't do this anymore! It does seem like she's getting a little better, slowly. She has stopped skipping her job. She even apologized to all the parents and teachers. She was looking away the whole time, but I think it's a huge progress. I don't expect Ririka to change completely, but I'm glad Daya has changed. Haru is right about Daya growing up as a human. I pray he'll grow up to be a great adult under the supervision of Haru.